Oh, you guys, you guys, the Southeast Asian Animal Pack. <gasps> Look at that tip here. Oh my gosh, and who the heck is that? Eight animals? That is so many more animals than we usually get. Oh, clouded leopard, proboscis monkey. Oh, that is definitely a sun bear. Did you know they're one of the most dangerous of all the bears in the world, even though they're the smallest? And look at that beautiful clouded leopard. Oh, wow. It is one heck of a busy month. All right, let's look through that again. All right, let's go back through that one more time so that we can really see if we can pick up on any details. It's kind of throwing me off to know that I'm not really going to be searching and searching for tons of new plants this time, but we have so many beautiful plants and assets that we're working with in Planet Zoo already. It is kind of fun to go ahead and just slip in to paying attention to the details of the animals, like this beautiful clouded leopard. Oh, it's tail is so long. And the tapir, the wonderful tapir whose babies are so freaking adorable. I can't wait to work with them. And I was actually shocked to see that the babarusas are being added in. I do not think about the babarusa very often. So often that I had to look up their name again because I could only remember calling them deer pigs. But we'll talk about the deer pigs in just a second too. Look at how beautiful this area looks. It may be a part of the new scenario that we're actually going to have. No new assets this time, but we are going to have eight animals, including a lot of animals that most people probably haven't heard of, unfortunately, like this proboscis monkey and the sun bear. And there's also going to be a new scenario that will be added in with the release of this pack too. And I always love the scenarios because it's really fun to go in and save a bunch of things that are already pre-built for you in the blueprints from the scenarios so you can just plunk them down and get going in your franchise zoos. And look at the beauty of that clouded leopard. Shifting gears from having the snow leopard who looks so similar to the clouded leopard up in the snowy peaks of the Himalayan mountains, we're going down into the jungles and the forest of Southeast Asia where you can find the clouded leopard, the sun bear, and the six other animals that are going to be added into this pack too. And yes, my friends, I said the six other animals. There are, like it said, eight animals that are coming in the Southeast Asian animal pack. However, they did not reveal a couple of the biggest ones that I feel like would make people freak out and be like, oh my gosh, this is so cool and different and new. I have to have this. I am shocked, friends, because I was I was expecting maybe like a whole bunch of those eight animals would be some of the small exhibit animals. Spoilers, it's just one small exhibit animal. And and instead, we're going to have eight or seven like really wonderful large animals that will roam around habitats. And I don't think that you guys have actually heard about maybe two of them. Let me know if you've heard about all of these species because I'm really tickled at the idea that I might have a chance to teach some of you guys about species that you didn't even know existed in the world that we share together. I'm, oh, I'm really excited about that. But all right, before we go ahead and reveal what all of them are, let's just take a little peek at some of the amazing screenshots, in-game screenshots as usual, of the animals that we know are going to be there, like the clouded leopard. It does look Looks so much like the snow leopard, but I can promise you guys this is actually a completely different species. The clouded leopard lives more down in the forest and jungles that are down at the bottom of the Himalayan mountains, where if you go up to the top of the Himalayan mountains, that's where you're going to find your snow leopard roaming around up in the Himalayas, up around the peaks of Tibet, and the clouded leopard actually goes the opposite direction, going more south as you start moving your way in to where the jungles are coming up with that lush greenery and where there are a lot of places to swim. That is actually one of the key characteristics shared between a lot of the animals that they have showed off in the Southeast Asian pack. A lot of them are fantastic swimmers. So imagine a lot of the luscious rivers surrounded with greenery, the waterfalls that you might see in some of the beautiful places of Southeast Asia. A lot of the inspiration for the scenario is actually drawn from Malaysia as well. And I've seen some beautiful Malaysian waterfalls show up in so many people's Instagram pictures. So I'm really excited to bring that to life here. 
but the clouded leopard happens to be a fantastic swimmer. And I love that idea of being able to watch them splash around in the water. It reminds me a lot of the tiger who does also happen to share some habitat with the clouded leopard. I don't know how much their modern day ranges would really overlap, but historically they would overlap a little bit. And both of those big cats do love swimming. And a fun fact about the clouded leopard, they actually have the longest teeth proportional to any feline in the world. So if you take the clouded leopard's teeth right there and you kind of measured how big its body is and then you compared that ratio to all of the other felines in the world, clouded leopard comes on top. Kind of reminds me about the little girl that would go chomp chomp on the fish who also live in a similar zone. So maybe it's something about swimming. Maybe it's something about the fish that are abundant there to eat. I don't know. That's That'd be kind of cool to see. Like, where do you have the animals who have the longest teeth in the world? Like, do they all hang out in one specific area? Anyway, that's just a curious question that keeps me um, occupied. But we've also got a sun bear as well. And I'm really tickled to see the sun bear because it is one of the eight species of bear that are currently extant, currently living in our world. But it's one of the rarest, the second rarest after the panda. And it's not one that is really talked about very often, at least where I live in North America. Because it is a Asian animal that's kind of reclusive. It is pretty nocturnal. It likes to come out when there aren't a lot of people around. They don't do well with people. I can see how not a lot of people would happen to know about them. And they're also the smallest species of bear in the world, which is also something I don't think a lot of people realize. And that's because they are arboreal. They spend a lot of their time up in the trees to get their food. Whereas a lot of the bear species we have here in North America will kind of roam around on the ground and they'll dig about looking for their food on the ground. Or if you're a polar bear, you're going to like leap into the freezing glacial waters and like hunt your food yourself. These guys actually prefer climbing trees to find their food. And even though they're sun bears, they are nocturnal. And I don't know if any of the other bear species could be described as nocturnal, like all the way. Oh, you guys let me know in the comments. That is a great question for a pixel biology community today, I think. Are the animals, like are, are any of the other bear species considered truly nocturnal or is it just the sun bear? But we're going to be working with them as well. I'm really excited. Even though we do have several other bear species and big cat species, these are still excellent examples of real animals that exist in our world that have their own completely unique traits and behaviors. And I'm excited to see how they behave and how they explore their habitats and what their babies look like. And then we've got the proboscis monkey, which is probably somebody that you guys mm, I probably either haven't heard of before or you've only seen a picture of. So I'm really excited to learn more about them and share what I learned about them with you guys. I've only seen them a couple times in real life myself, but these guys are also extremely good swimmers. They are actually the most prolific swimmers out of all of the primate species. So again, we come back to that thing I was saying where a lot of these animals are great swimmers. It inspires kind of a very lush, jungle pack with lots of waterfalls cascading everywhere. And of course, where you have water and where you have life, you're going to have the food chain. And one of the reasons they think that the proboscis monkey, who actually has like slightly webbed like fingers, is such a great swimmer is because their main predator is crocodiles. Like what? The main predator of this monkey is crocodiles. I would have put like, I don't know, tigers, bears, not a lion because they're not over in that country for tigers, bears, and lions, oh my. But, you know, I would have put other things a lot higher before a crocodile. But these guys are going to be very concerned about getting too close to the waterways because there are indeed crocodilians that are their main predator. Like, what? I can't wait to learn more cool facts like that as we start researching the different species even better. And speaking of researching the different species, yes, it is not just these lovely three who are going to be the stars of the Southeast Animal Asian Pack. There's also, if you'll wiggle on down here, quite the diversity of animals with, dun dun dun, the sun bear, clouded leopard, and the proboscis monkey, as we have mentioned. And then there's also... 
the Malaysian tapir. I am so excited to get tapir added in, primarily because I love tapir babies. They are so adorable. They have little swirling patterns on their coats that help them to blend into the leaf litter, stay out of danger, try to make sure that no predators go and search out for them. I'm actually super excited to learn new facts about the tapir. I know of tapir and I know a few cool facts, like the fact that that long nose of theirs is used like elephants use their nose. Although you would look at a tapir and because of its size, you might think that nose kind of works like an anteater nose. If you were like just comparing apples to apples or noses to noses in this case, but actually the tapir eats mostly leaves and twigs and it uses its nose like a prehensile little limb, just like elephants do, to be able to reach out and grab at leaves and twigs and pull them towards their face. And we've got a lot more to learn about the tapir here. We're just brushing the surface of a couple cool facts about them and I'm really excited to be able to add them into one of our zoos. But I'm also really excited to be able to do a lot more research on some of the animals that I actually don't know a ton about, like the babarusa. The babarusa is a type of pig that is described as the deer pig, and I've actually seen it once before in real life at a zoo, and at the time it was described as the deer pig, so I was really tickled to learn their actual name is like the babarusa. And they're really fascinating because they're considered to be kind of a more... Mm, I would say earlier ancient species of pig than the ones that we have around us in most places of the world. It's thought that about 30,000 years ago they were brought to some islands around Malaysia by people as a food source and it left to breed in the wild and eventually as island animals that are isolated for a long time do, they developed these really unique traits. So like take some pigs, put them on an island, give them 30,000 years to just kind of grow into whatever they grow into and you end up with a bobby rusa so other than just glancing at them and knowing that the males are the ones who have those long tusks i know very little about them and i'm really excited that i get to learn more about them while we explore the world of planet zoo and add them into all of our different zoos together and of course, I'm really excited to be able to share more information about a couple of the other animals that are coming in the Southeast Asian pack that I actually don't know a ton about. I recognize the names of both of these species, but I actually don't have a lot of in-depth knowledge about them. So I'm really looking forward to the opportunity to be able to start to learn about them and to watch up close and personal as their behaviors are displayed in Planet Zoo with the Binturong being one of the last two that we've got here in the pack. And Binturongs, I've actually had a chance to meet a real Binturong in person when Chips and I did a backstage VIP tour at the San Diego Zoo. He was really a energetic, almost almost dog-like, I would say, creature. However, he's really long. He almost reminds you of kind of running into a, if a lemur walked on four feet and had a big fluffy tail and a face full of whiskers. And the Binturong that we met was actually a great animal ambassador who could display a lot of the characteristics of his species, particularly their balance. We learned that basically he would do anything for a treat, so he was very happy to walk up across a balance beam and show how they use those long tails and those long bodies and their powerful forelimbs to be able to really balance across tree limbs when they're crawling across trees up in the treetops. So that was really fun to be able to see that Binturong in person. And one of the funniest facts we actually learned about Binturongs, and one of the facts that apparently the zookeepers were the most excited to share with us, is that Binturong urine, aka pee, smells like popcorn. That's due to a chemical that they actually produce in their urine, and it means that when humans are around and they smell their urine, they smell buttered popcorn. That's actually a trait that is shared for some reason, and nobody's exactly sure why, with the civets and with the leopards of South Africa. So who knows why those three species, their urine smells like buttered popcorn. But that was one of like the most excited facts that the zookeepers had to tell us that day. And I definitely remember just how exciting it was to see a Binturong in person. So I'm really hoping you guys will be just as excited to have them in Planet Zoo and learn a little bit more about a species not a lot of people hear about. 
And speaking of species that not a lot of people have heard about, how about the dole? Also known as the whistling dog, they are the only canid native to many parts of Asia. People will often compare them to being kind of a cross between a wolf and a fox in their appearance. They have absolutely gorgeous fur that does have that russet look of a fox. However, they are a canid species, so think your wolves, think your dingoes, an animal like that who is the only canid that lives through Southeast Asia. And I wonder if that's because there is so much competition with some of the big cats. There's so much diversity in the different types of environments that you have throughout Asia. I've actually not done a lot of research into the history of canids through Asia. So this is gonna be a great opportunity to learn more about the dole, AKA the whistling dog, who do travel in packs and they whistle to communicate to each other. That kind of reminds me about the way that the high pitched chirps of the African wild dog allow them to communicate with their pack. And we're gonna, we're gonna learn more about them. I'm really excited for that. It's just really thrilling to get animals that are not the first that you often see in real life zoos, starting to have an opportunity to star in Planet Zoo so that we can look at them, we can really get excited about them, we can build exhibits for them and learn more about their needs and their unique characteristics and realize that, yeah, all of these are animals that actually share our planet with us right now. Every time I think about that, that just blows my mind. And of course, last but not least, we do actually have one exhibit animal this time, and it's one of the ones I am the most excited about because how could I not be thrilled to have the giant leaf insect? The giant leaf insect. It's literally a leaf that has come to life as a bug. Or to be more specific and honoring its path through its evolutionary journey more correctly, it is a bug who has over time adapted to look more like a leaf because that is an extremely successful way to try to camouflage yourself from predators. The giant leaf insect is also a great representative of the 50 species of leaf insects throughout the world because it's going to be a very large one and it, hopefully it'll be pretty easy to see inside of our exhibits but it's gonna be really fascinating because I feel like now when we put down an exhibit and fill it with giant leaf insects we might as well just call that exhibit like a botanical exhibit because people the, if I was the guest I would probably walk up to it in my planet zoo zoo and be like I don't see anything here it's just a bunch of pretty leaves so I'm really tickled to actually use the leaf insect as an opportunity to sort of like scatter botanical garden spots through my zoos and use those spots as places is where I can get guests to approach and donate and pretend it's just for a garden because I don't know it's going to be interesting to see if I can actually find these guys inside of those small exhibits so I'm looking forward to that too and then finally, another big update is being released the same day as the pack on March 30th with update 1.5 coming. Definitely check out the Frontier forums if you wanna get all sorts of interesting details about what's coming in the free update portion of this. A ton of quality of life changes where things are going to get a lot easier for managing your zookeepers and trying to make sure that guests are able to interact with all of the items that you put down better. And also big changes like multiple zoo entrances so that you can actually put down multiple places where guests can come into your zoo. I think that's going to be a complete game changer because you're no longer going to feel like you have some great exhibits but they were built later in your zoo's life so they're really far at the back and nobody ever gets to go to them. I think that's going to give a lot of the guests a chance to actually really get up and see the exhibits that I build way back in the back corners instead of having to rely on being able to slowly transport them over many game years from different transportation spots to different bathrooms to different exhibits. Well, it's really fun to keep that element if you want the challenge of convincing a guest to walk all the way into the very back of your zoo. I think it's gonna feel like a much more living and vibrant place to be able to have the guest show up on the other side of your map because that's how it works in real zoos too. They usually have more than one entrance so that people can see more things and so that your parking isn't crowded. And footnote, I'm really glad we didn't have to deal with parking in Planet Zoo. That's something that would have taken everything a little too far on the realism. 
But then there's going to be several other updates, like the water visual settings are going to be easier to change. And now you're actually going to be able to change the color and the transparency of your water. So if you want to be able to see things just perfectly, like make it crystal clear, you can do that. But if you want to change the water so that it's really murky and dark, maybe it has a little bit more of a green tone and it's swampy, you can do that. Or I bet people are gonna start using this just to set up some pretty fountains and some pretty decorative areas with different water features. So I'm looking forward to seeing how everyone's going to be bringing that to life in all of their zoos. And then there's billboards. Custom billboards are going to be coming in. And that's actually got our Discord community really excited over on our Patreon and Twitch subscriber Discord because everyone's already thinking about the different art they could add in, the way they can customize their own information boards. I think that's so exciting. And I'm also really looking forward to being able to add in some of your guys like fan art or some of your pictures. We have a lot of great photographers in our Discord community and in our overall community for instance. So it would be really cool to be able to share some of the pictures that you guys have taken at zoos and put them up in either like habitat, exhibit, or conservation uh, education boards or a big billboard. It doesn't have to be like a huge billboard either. So you can actually take just the smaller habitat exhibit and conservation boards, which the exhibit board in particular is very tiny. And you can use those as places to put custom images now. So like I said, for me, it might be really fun to go and find some pictures that Chips and I have taken when we're actually out like at real life zoos and slip them into our Zudesia zoos. And I would love to be able to tie our community right in there with being able to bring in pictures that you guys have actually taken of those animals or of some of the art that you have done or just some of the cool information that you might learn. Think how cool it will be to be able to put up conservation education boards that actually have new facts on them. Something that we can read so that then when we happen to like wander by our zoo and do tours, you can turn and you can see that information information right there. I think that would be really cool. There's also going to be an addition to do custom audio to the speakers. That's going to be really cool. And it's something I would have never thought to bring to Planet Zoo, but I'm really looking forward to maybe being able to add in some of my own music. So think of making like the pirate zone in our Ice Ice Outpost area actually play some pirate music. That could be really exciting. Those are, those are updates and tweaks and features that I didn't even think could be added to Planet Zoo. And I really like that. I really like the updates being so different and so new that I didn't really predict them. And then finally, there is going to be one big update that I'm interested in and would love to see if it actually makes it into the challenge mode for those community challenges that we have. But there are now going to be statues that you can put down as scenery pieces when you receive them as rewards for completing different scenarios and timed scenarios. So the career and time scenarios you can do. Now you can get statues, bronze, silver, or gold, depending on how well you did in that scenario, that you can put down into I'm hoping any of your zoos. It says there'll be a new range of scenery statues you can earn by completing a scenario level that you'll be able to place all over your zoos. Does that mean that we could start putting down statues for just patting ourselves on the back for winning the community challenges? Because I would really love that. If those could start to be the rewards, I would work so much harder so that I could put them down and just really feel super proud about the contribution I did for the community challenges. I doubt that's the case, but I can go ahead and dream. There's going to be a few other features added in to hopefully make things easier for everybody. Quality of life changes all mixed together with the new animal pack coming out on the 30th. And basically, it sounds like it's gonna be a great time. So which of the animals are you the most excited about, guys? I know that I'm looking forward to the proboscis monkeys, the dole, the binturong, even the babirusa. Okay, the cloud leopard, the sun bear, and the tapirs. And okay, I'm looking forward to all of them. <laughs> And I can't wait to teach you guys more about them. I'd love to hear what you really want to see when we are able to dive into these adventures together when the pack comes out. And I'm looking forward to sharing hopefully some fun streams of us revamping and redecorating the zoos that we currently have over on our Twitch. So be sure to give us a follow over there so that you're ready for when we're going to be diving on in. And most importantly, my friends, stay curious. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.